Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. St. Louis has a new football team. And no, we don't mean soccer football or the return of Stan Kroenke in the NFL. The XFL hopes to establish itself as a fast and furious rival to the National Football League. It's fielding a new team in St. Louis. On Wednesday, the name was announced, the Battlehawks. Winged warriors. Preparing for flight. Preparing to fight. They await their orders, then attack as one. The Battlehawks begin play at the Dome at America's Center in February. Joining me in studio to talk about the St. Louis Battlehawks is team president Kurt Hunsecker. Kurt, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So we got to ask first, what the heck is a Battlehawk? That's the best question because it's so (laughs) open-ended and fun. It really can be a lot of different things depending on your perspective. And I came from working in minor league baseball, and we had team names like Trash Pandas and Sod Poodles. The creativity with a fun name like that where you don't have a preconceived notion of what it is really opens up the possibilities from what can we name our kids' club? What could a possible mascot look like? You know, what could the concourse be called? And with aviation and the storied history St. Louis has with it, there is a lot of different ways we can go with this. And so that's going to be up to the fans yes. to see which way they take it. So one of the big things with the XFL is it's fans above all. I mean, it is truly a, going to be a fan-driven league. Now that we have uh, we've unveiled the Battle Hawks name, logos, and colors, now we're going to co-author the next chapter of this brand development with the fan base. And it's amazing. Um, social media picked up very quickly the hidden Easter egg of the STL when you flip the logo upside down. We thought that that would take a while before, and then that was, I mean, a while ended up being like an hour and a half, I You think. underestimated St. Louis Twitter. No, I, I, I did, I, we don't underestimate anything. <laughs> uh, but we thought that a multi-phased approach to this would have been pretty fun to do and kind of talks the tonality of the team and the league in general. And then it was just like right out of the gate. They're like, oh, you know what? If you flip it upside down, it says STL. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> we'll hide the Easter egg in the middle of the room next time. So you said you started uh, July 1. Mm-hmm. You're a St. Louis guy, mm-hmm. but you weren't living in St. Louis Correct. up until this particular job. Uh, give us a little sense of your background. Uh, so I'm born and raised in St. Louis, just like the team now. Where did and, you go to high school? Well, so that's where I'll lose you. So I, I, my, my family moved down to Florida right before high school. Oh, okay. But I've so that's always, a dangerous question here. I know, here. I know. So when I say Bloomingdale, everybody's like, what? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's in, it's in Tampa, Florida. But went to the University of Missouri, started the School of Journalism, Always been, always identify as a Midwestern laid back. Uh, and then it's the fifth different time I've lived in St. Louis, and it's just that tractor or tractor beam of just bringing in. Pulls you, know, you back. Pull, pulls you back. And the ability to lead one of my hometown's professional sports teams, I mean, that's a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, if you can't, you know, play center field for the Cardinals, yeah, okay. That this is uh, second best. Yeah, this this is this is the next dream come true. So, yeah, it, it's been a whole lot of fun. It's it's been a lot of a build, and you know, quite a bit of the question, or quite a few of the questions I've received from from fans and just the general St. Louis community, as I've been out and about the last two months, has been well, we don't see you anywhere, and yes and no, you don't see the public face of the team. That you know, we didn't start an advertising campaign because we didn't have a name, right? And so there, everything was stair step. But we're building a lot of the foundational elements. I mean, we're building a front office. Coach Hayes has already completed his the football operations side, and they, those. And, they, and Coach Hayes, I understand this is a big get for you guys. Who's who's uh, Coach Hayes? So Coach Hayes, uh, our head coach and general manager, he spent the previous ten plus years uh, on the coaching staff for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, long history in coaching uh so excited to work with him he's built an, a, a rock star uh, football staff and they've been really really busy with all the showcases over the summer scouting players obviously with uh training camps going on right now quite a few of those players that don't make it will will likely become xfl players and play in our league in february so he has been extraordinarily busy uh but he and i have always been like 
I hope the, I hope the name's good. And uh, I'm just now that obviously we've we've known it's like we're gonna look good on the field as well. So, you know, it, it is a uh, it is fun co-authoring this with him because we have been very focused on being community centric, and it's gonna be like that not just for the five games at the dome starting in February, but leading up to it. You know, with high school football starting up next week. We do plan on having the Battle Hawks front office staff and various members of the football operations side going out in the community, surprise and delighting, you know, varsity football teams, junior varsity, youth leagues, uh, and just really, you know, integrating ourselves into the community. So you're talking about finding players, you've mm-hmm. got a coach, you've got a name, but so much of sports is this tradition. It's something mm-hmm. that's passed down from father to son and you get these cheers and mm-hmm. there's all these little in jokes you're playing Sweet Caroline or right. you know whatever the local thing is. How do you build something from scratch? That's got to be so hard what you guys are trying to do here. So to some it could be so hard and then to me in particular, when you don't have a playbook or there isn't, well, we've always done it this way or we've never done it that way, and you really have a blank canvas, that's when it gets really fun. And so it's going out to the community. And so, I mean, the, the, the feedback on social media of, oh, here we, we could have the tailgate section can be called this, this, and this. Or, hey, you guys should play this after every touchdown. I, I mean, yes, yes, and yes. If fans you know, engage with the team through any of the social media channels, email us, see us out in the community, and they start with, hey, I have an idea. That's the best start of any conversation because we are building all these traditions together. It's not that, you know, the Battle Hawks fan engagement staff or Coach Hayes and the football operations side has all the answers. We want to work with the community and, and build those traditions of what's the, what's the music the players can, um, come through on to, before the start of the game. You know, do we go down the field? Can fans go out in the field before the game start? Like there is, can they? They maybe could. Th- everything is not a possibility right now, and so it, this is like the greatest. If you if you're launching a new product, and you're you're starting to market it, this is the most fun time because this is the brainstorm. There is no bad idea. We'll start weeding things out as we get closer to February 2020. But I mean, we've had some great ideas this week. One gentleman who came out to some two of our events this week. He's like, hey, you know what? You should name the 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 um, like the fan section after me. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's, that's a, a bold, I don't, bold move. But at the same time, I'm like, if you think about it, you're like, you know, we could have like naming rights, fan naming rights for certain sections, and then play that up. And it, and I mean, there are just so many things that we can do because who's going to tell us no at this point? I mean, there's no there's no past history. The XFL, a lot of the questions I get is, what does that stand for from like an acronym? I'm like, it doesn't stand for anything as an acronym. It stands for football and fun and, and nothing else. And when fans hear that, they're like, mm, I'm on board with this idea. <laughs> they're immediately on mm-hmm. board. So you say there's no history, you know, no ideas are wrong, but there is a tiny bit of history here. The previous iteration of the XFL, it was here for just one year mm-hmm. in 2001. Where do you think they went wrong? The only thing that is similar is the name and Vince McMahon. I mean, th- that's really the continuity between XFL 1.0 and XFL 2020. Wasn't that also meant to be an alternative to the NFL? Which, it, I mean, in some ways, that's that's got to be what you are here. <laughs> it, it's not so much an alternative to the NFL. It's a uh, amplification of pro football. So we will start the week after the weekend after the Super Bowl, where. Almost 40 million Americans have some form of sadness and or depression because there's no more football. And then our championship game will be on the Sunday after the NFL draft. So that gap in football fans' lives where it's like, oh, I miss football. Like they, they will watch replays of college games, of NFL games, all in that time period. And now you're going to have a league of professional football players. So higher than the collegiate um talent level Mm -hmm. and you know some of these guys might have been injured in their last years of college or in in the case of our first signee Landry Jones who was one of the most prolific passers in collegiate football history he was behind Ben Roethlisberger in in Pittsburgh so he never had a chance so the XFL is giving him an opportunity to to play and show that hey he's more than a capable quarterback so you're going to have a lot of those types of elite players playing the XFL and then what we've done from a uh, from a from a game related like product development standpoint 
is similar to what a Procter & Gamble or a Unilever would do when they're trying to launch a new product. It's been a whole lot of testing, a whole lot of feedback. We've done focus groups in each of the eight markets. Uh, we've had football fans, non-football fans, teenagers, gamblers. I mean, we're just talking about different elements of the game. And what we've realized is there's a whole lot that people love about professional football. And there's a little bit that they're like, yeah, it could be better. That's really what we looked at. Trying to fix those little things. Yes. It's Give me an example. What's something that people like football, but they hate X? Well, you, when you turn on the TV, you, it, they want it to look like football. So, you know, arena football, much truncated field, fewer players, everybody's moving at all times. It's XFL is 100 yards, 11 on 11. It's going to look like football when you watch it on TV. But 40 second clocks, you know, kind of, all right, wide receiver runs out. Now he has to jog back to the, to the uh, huddle. Then he goes back out, lines up. 25 second clocks. All the players, all the offensive players will have headsets, kind of like what we're wearing right now, so they can hear the plays coming in, so you, you eliminate the huddle. So that's the so you're keeping things moving it, yes. faster. And, and that's what the fans have always wanted. There are very, uh, in, in professional football, there, there are, it just kind of, it gets choppy at times. And so we're going to maintain that energy from a game-related standpoint, and then from a fan ex- experience standpoint at the Dome, we're going to have that same kind of energy going on during TV timeouts, during the different quarters, halftime, obviously, and really make it just it's going to be fun to watch on TV. It's going to be better to experience live. One of the big questions that people are raising about the NFL these days is that players are getting hurt. And that is really something that at least I keep hearing people are upset about when mm-hmm. it comes to the NFL. Now, the original XFL was seen as more dangerous for mm-hmm. the players. That was almost a selling point that this was where you were going to get the big hits. Um, now that we're looking at that issue so differently as a society, is the XFL going to do anything differently in terms of player safety? <laughs> yes, this is <laughs> probably like, this is probably the the starkest difference um, between you know, the old XFL yes. and the new. So XFL. the new one, like just take for instance the kickoff or the start of the game, because in the original XFL was two guys racing to the fifty yard line, like a like a rugby scrum, literally a scramble at yes. that point. No and, kickoff. And and so here, you know, one of the rules that we're testing is a kickoff where the kicking team is already on the other side of the field and they're standing still. And the receiving team is on the, is waiting for the ball too, and they're standing still. And nobody moves until the kick returner's caught the ball. So those high impact, high velocity hits mm-hmm. that have historically caused the most injury or the probability of injury, that's almost eliminated when they're only five yards apart and standing still. So now you're gonna have instead of you know crushing hits, it's gonna be more of uh, jukes and slants and pick and roll type things to where it's far more strategic. But then it, it, it what we ended up doing, the football operations team f- watched tens of thousands of games and realized that on kickoffs in, in the NFL in college, by the time the kick returner caught the ball, the spots where we're going to line up to start the game is effectively where they're at as they're running down. You just you just limit the high impact aspect. And that is really entirely due to our commitment to player safety. Okay. So you are there's a definite awareness yes. of <laughs> the NFL has not maybe gone far enough. Uh, the XFL website mentions that political demonstrations, like the Colin Kaepernick-led demonstration wherein he and other players would kneel during the playing of the national anthem, quote, have no place in the XFL. Why was there a conscious decision to put this out there before the season even began? So we really wanted to simplify what the experience was going to be like. And again, it goes back to it's going to be football and it's going to be fun. And I think what a lot of sports fans in particular, when they're looking for entertainment, they, they want to get away from the daily grind and just have an escapism and just have a fun time. You get to go to the game with your family and friends, coworkers, people in your community, and just kind of relax. No like, politics. Yeah, no politics. I mean, that that's it is all about football and fun and really nothing else. And, and that's a that is a very uh, dedicated effort for us is we just want people to have fun watching the games, enjoying the games, whether it's live or at, on TV, at the bars, watching with friends, wherever you want to consume the game. You've also got a rule, though, about no players with criminal convictions. Mm-hmm. What's the thinking on that? So right now we've extended, Commissioner Locke has extended invitations out to those players who came through the showcases over the, over the course of summer. So they're like combine-esque uh, events. We had it at Lou Fuse Athletic Training Center in July, mid-July here. 
And the players who we said, yep, these are going to be XFL players. They're elite. Um, we sent them out the, uh, the commissioner's invitations. And if they accepted, then they're going through the same things that I did when I accepted the job. You know, there's background checks. And so they're, you're an employee uh, of the league. And it's just there's really no differentiation between uh, front office executive and a player. It's the same kind of rules. If full background checks, I mean, it was intriguing to see that, you know, blog posts, like a, a blog I tried to start like, you know, 15 years ago was in the packet. They found that. Yeah. I'm just like, well, this is thorough and great. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it, it, it is just, you know, it's just the, it's, it's the way that we want to operate the, the culture of the team. I saw a British newspaper reported the XFL is basically an NFL for Trump supporters. Its creation is a naked attempt at monetizing a divided America. What would you say to that? Well, we're not even a rival to the NFL. I mean, it's truly satisfying a need that's in the marketplace. I mean, football fans, like I mentioned, like, you know, the day after the Super Bowl, it's like, ugh. Like, yes, it's it's based, you know, spring training is right around the corner, but football has has such a dominant presence in the, in the sports landscape, especially in the U.S., that it is really designed for them. Now, at the same time, Battle Hawks games, as well as games with in Tampa Bay and Houston and New York and other play, other XFL markets, the affordability and the accessibility it's is going to be also, a lot less oh, expensive. Yes. I, what yes. kind of ticket prices are we talking? So we're finalizing all the sailing, but I mean, uh, pretty much it's going. If you're a family of four, you can get to go to a game for a hundred dollars. Okay, that and, is and, a big and difference. And the way that we're doing the dome, and, and people who may or may not have gone to professional games in the past, you know, we're just playing it. We're just going to seat in the lower bowl to start. So the concourse level, so the upper levels, we won't fill. And so it's going to be a much more intimate experience. And so even at a $25 price point in a lower bowl, that is exponentially more affordable than than what the previous team was charging. Because we really want the families to be a part of it. I mean, part of this being St. Louis born and raised and, and community-centric and fan-focused brand that we've built, independent of the Battle Hawks now being the – like the visual identifier of the team is, you know, we want, we, we want to promote the game. You know, obviously this, the safety aspects, there's a whole lot of flag football teams that have cropped up in the St. Louis area, you know, ever since the, the previous team left attendance at high school games has really gone through the roof. And according to the research hmm. we've been doing. So St. Louis is such a passionate football town. We want to make, we, we want to tap into their passion and, but we want to make it a, a totally different experience, a lot more fun. Uh, you know, the different types of opportunities we have, like same that that same blank canvas we we're talking about before. Like, what's the food and beverage uh, options going to be like? What can we do before the game? What kind of traditions can we create? Maybe a battle march of bands coming into the dome to get people jazzed up for the game. I and mean, those are all the things that we're looking forward to co-author with the community in the coming weeks and months. So even though the NFL has been in decline, ratings are down, all that stuff, it sounds like you think in St. Louis there's going to be a real thirst for football. Oh, no question. And I think the we're very cognizant of the past, of, of pro football in the past in St. Louis. And I think, well, I know. The, the, one of the things when I was going through this interview process, the Blues were making their, their run towards the Stanley Cup. And whatever false narrative was out there about St. Louis not being a passionate sports town, the, the, the Blues eradicated instantly with the amount of support that people all over the country and really all over the world could see watching those games of having tens of thousands of people on Market Street, uh, selling out uh, Enterprise Center for watch parties, having what, 30, 35,000 people at Bush Stadium for Game 7. I mean, St. Louis is such a great sports town, and I know that. I'm born and raised here. The football side, I mean, there's a lot of people who have scar tissue about the way that the previous team left, but now I think with the with the launch of the Battle Hawks name, logo, and identity, now my hope is, and we've gotten some feedback that, okay, you know what, that chapter is done. You know what, that, that book is done. Let's just move it to the side. There's some great memories. There's some not so great aspects. It's a new book. And now there's nothing but blank pages ahead of us. And as someone leading the organization on the, on the fan engagement side and then Coach Hayes on the football side, that's an awesome responsibility and a whole lot of fun that we can have working with the community on filling those pages in the coming weeks, months, and years. 
That's Kurt Hunsecker. He is the president of the new St. Louis Battlehawks. They'll be taking the field at the Dome at America Center um, this February. Kurt, thank you so much for being here today. No, thank you for having me. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.